Hello there, this is Callan Bentley. Welcome back for another Smart Figure. In this video, we're going to take a look at spheroidal weathering. And after you're done watching the video, you should be able to describe what spheroidal weathering is, what it looks like, and how it forms. Here's a look at a scene you might encounter if you ever visited Joshua Tree National Park in Southern California. There in the Mojave Desert, you'll find a granite that has been broken along a series of fractures. So we would call these fractures joints, perhaps. And these joints divide the granite up into a series of angular blocks. So you can see that these blocks, for instance, over here on the uh, upper left, they have sort of a diamond shape overall. But not all of them have that shape. For instance, over here in the upper right, you see some that have sort of a rounded form. In the foreground, there's two very nice boulders that have a very rounded shape to them. And up here at the top, you can see there's one that's almost perfectly spherical. So what's going on with this? How do we explain this disparity between really angular blocks of granite and really round ones? Well, it goes back to what we were discussing in another smart figure, that basically the uh, increase in surface area of rock due to physical weathering ends up producing more area for chemical weathering to attack. So let's go ahead and just zoom in here on the first block in this diagram. You'll notice that this block is a cube of rock, not quite the diamond like the ones we were just looking at, but close enough, and it's got six faces. The corners basically have the greatest amount of surface area of any of the faces on the block. Uh, so that basically they're exposed on the top, the left, and the back, if you want to think about it that way. And that's more area for chemical weathering to attack. So what that means is that the corners are going to tend to wear away faster than the rest of the rock. So we're going to eat away at these corners more rapidly than we would eat away, say, at the middle of these faces. So how does that relate to the scene we looked at in Joshua Tree? Well, it'd be something like this. You've got an initial situation where you have granite, and that granite is being physically weathered, so it's being broken into a smaller number of pieces. Those are the angular blocks. Then weathering goes to work on those angular blocks, transforming the ones with really sharp corners into increasingly rounded shapes. And then basically that's exposed at the surface, and that's the scene that we were looking at. So the overall trend here is basically to go from an initial angular block of a greater volume and then wearing away the corners more rapidly and the uh, after the corners the edges more rapidly and over time that'll basically reduce that initial cube into something that is increasingly spherical so the end result basically is a sphere and a sphere is the most efficient shape in terms of surface area to volume so it's got the least amount of surface area for a given volume of rock now, is spheroidal weathering the only way that you can produce a rounded boulder like this? Hopefully, you answered no. This will be a concept that we cover in the next chapter, but you can produce a rounded shape also by basically tumbling an initial angular block downstream or over and over in a surf, and you basically will break off the um, little pointy bits that poke out, and you'll get a rounded shape that way. So there are... In summary, there are two ways to produce a rounded shape geologically. You can produce it through tumbling of the cobble over some distance, or you can weather it in place, and that's spheroidal weathering. Thank you very much for your attention. This has been another Smart Figure.